we now compute error in Simpson's rule. So, we have expression for error in interpolation when we interpolate the function f of x by a quadratic polynomial. So, it will be the third derivative by factorial 3 into x minus x naught x minus x 1 into x minus x 2 where psi lies in the interval x naught to x 2. So, we would like to get the error in evaluating the definite integral by approximating f of x by p 2 of x. So, that will be integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h f of x dx minus this integral p 2 of x dx and we want this expression which is error in Simpson's rule and that will be integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h the third derivative at psi by factorial 3 into x minus x naught x minus x 1 into x minus x 2 integrated with respect to x. So, again by using mean value theorem for integrals, we have the third derivative at some eta by 6 into integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h. I use the fact that the points are equally spaced. So, it is x minus x naught x minus x naught minus h into x minus x naught minus 2 h and this must be integrated with respect to x. So, let us consider integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h then this will give you x minus x naught the whole square minus h into x minus x naught and that must be multiplied by x minus x naught minus 2 h and integrated with respect to x. So, x naught to x naught plus 2 h x minus x naught the whole cubed minus 2 h into x minus x naught. So, x minus x naught the whole cubed minus 2 h into x minus x naught the whole square. Then the next term minus h into x minus x naught the whole square. So, this becomes 3 h then plus 2 h square into x minus x naught. So, this must be integrated with respect to x. This will give me x minus x naught power 4 by 4 minus 3 h into x minus x naught the whole cube by 3 plus 2 h square into x minus x naught the whole square by 2 between x naught and x naught plus 2 h. So, we shall apply the limits that will give you at the upper limit x naught plus 2 h this will give you 2 h power 4 by 4 minus h into 2 h the whole cubed plus h square plus h square into 2 h the whole square that is at the upper limit and at the lower limit all this will vanish. So, giving 16 h power 4 by 4 minus 8 h power 4 plus 4 h power 4 turns out to be 0. So, this tells us that this method is exact for polynomials of degree up to 2. So, let us evaluate the error as follows namely we wanted to see what is the difference between integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h f of x dx minus the formula that we derived namely h by 3 into f of x naught plus 4 times f of x 1 plus 
f of x 2. We approximated this integral by this method. So, the error is this minus the method that evaluates this integral approximately. So, it is x naught to x naught plus 2 h f of x dx minus I shall call this as term 2 and this as term 1 and evaluate 1 by 1 and then finally, see what the difference is. So, let us first do term 1. It is integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h f of x dx. Now, this integral exists f of x is a continuous function integral exists and therefore, there exists a function capital F of x such that f dashed of x is equal to small f of x by fundamental theorem of integral calculus. And therefore, this will be integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h capital F dashed of x dx and that is f of x between x naught to x naught plus 2 h and that is f of x naught plus 2 h minus f of x naught. So, we shall use Taylor's theorem and write this as f of x naught plus 2 h into f dashed of x naught plus 2 h the whole square into f double dashed of x naught by factorial 2 plus 2 h the whole cubed by factorial 3 into f triple dashed of x naught plus 2 h the whole power 4 by factorial 4 into the fourth derivative at x naught plus 2 h the whole power 5 by factorial 5 into the fifth derivative at x naught and so on. So, you will see why I have stopped with this later on when we also complete the evaluation of the second term. This minus f at x naught which appears here. So, f of x naught can be cancelled and this gives us 2 h into I know that f dashed of x is f of x. So, f dashed at x naught is small f at x naught plus 4 h square by factorial 2. So, 2 h square f double dashed is small f dashed then 8 by 6. So, 4 by 3 h cubed f triple dashed will be f double dashed at x naught plus 16 by 24. So, 2 by 3 h power 4 the fourth derivative of capital F. So, f triple dashed at x naught then 32 by 120 into h power 5 into fifth derivative at x naught. So, this will be the fourth derivative at x naught plus etcetera. So, we have been able to express integral x naught to x naught plus 2 h f of x dx in terms of the function values and its derivatives using fundamental theorem of integral calculus and Taylor series. So, let us keep term 1 as this. Now, we move on to term 2 and then evaluate what it is. So, term 2 is minus h by 3 into f of x naught plus 4 times f of x 1 plus f of x 2. So, which is minus f h by 3 into f of x naught plus 4 times f of x 1 is x naught plus h plus f of x 2 is x naught plus 2 h. So, I shall use the following notation namely I shall write f of x naught as f naught right and then I expand 4 times f of x naught plus h is f of x naught plus h into f dashed at x naught 
plus h square by factorial 2 into f f of x naught plus h into f dashed at x naught plus h square by factorial 2 f double dashed at x naught h cube by factorial 3 f triple dashed at x naught h power 4 by factorial 4 into fourth derivative at x naught plus etcetera that is the first term. The sec next term is f of x naught plus 2 h. So, f of x naught plus 2 h into f dashed at x naught plus 2 h the whole square by factorial 2 f double dashed at x naught 2 h the whole cubed by factorial 3 into f triple dashed at x naught plus 2 h the whole power 4 by factorial 4 into fourth derivative at x naught plus etcetera. I have now collected the terms whose coefficients are f naught, f naught dashed and so on and have simplified and obtained the result at this step and that is term 2. So, now let us substitute in this expression for the error. So, the error is term 1 minus term 2. So, we now look at the corresponding coefficients. I have f of x naught and I have denoted it by f suffix naught. So, the coefficient of f of x naught in term 1 is 2 h and in term 2 it is minus 2 h. Then the coefficient of f dashed naught in term 1 is 2 h square that in term 2 is minus 2 h square. f naught double dashed is 4 by 3 h cubed minus 4 by 3 h cubed and then the third derivative at x naught has coefficient 2 by 3 x cubed here and in term 2 it is minus 2 by 3 h, h power 4. So, now I write down this term which is 32 by 120 and that is equal that is 4 by 15 h power 5 into the fourth derivative at 0 that comes from term 1 and term 2 gives me minus 5 by 18 into h power 5 into the fourth derivative at 0. So, we observe that the first non-zero term in evaluating the error in Simpson's rule comes with the derivative of f namely the fourth derivative of f evaluated at x naught. So, this is the first non-zero term in the expression for the error. So, this is the leading term in error this gives you h power 5 into fourth derivative multiplied by 4 by 15 minus 5 by 18. So, that will give you h power 5 so by 90 into fourth derivative. So, 24 minus 25 and that gives you minus h power 5 by 90 into fourth derivative. Since it is something like the remainder term in Taylor expansion. So, I write down the fourth derivative at some psi where psi lies between x naught and x naught plus 2 h. So, we see that the error in Simpson's rule is of order of h to the power of 5 and the expression for the error is h power 5 by 90 into the fourth derivative evaluated at some psi between x naught and x naught plus 2 h 
and what does this tell? This tells you that the method is exact up to polynomials of degree 3. When we computed the error using the expression for error in interpolation, we showed that the term which appeared with the third derivative turned out to be 0 and that is what happened here also. The, the next term which appears with the fourth derivative survives and it contributes to the error in Simpson's rule. We infer that the error in interpolation is such that the method is exact for polynomials of degree up to 3 and the error is of order of h to the power of 5. And the expression for the error in Simpson's rule is this namely minus h power 5 by 90 into fourth derivative at psi where psi lies between x naught and x naught plus 2 h. So, what did we do? We derived Newton Coates formulas by approximating the function by a linear polynomial and a quadratic interpolation polynomial and obtained numerical integration methods. And we also have observed that we do incur error in such an approximation. So, the natural question would be to answer can this error be reduced? Is there a way by means of which I can reduce this error? Can I find a bound for the error in each of these methods? The answer is yes and we will see how we can do it in trapezoidal rule first. So, the question is how to reduce error in trapezoidal rule. So, can we find bound for error in trapezoidal rule? These are the questions to be answered now. So, what did we do? in trapezoidal rule, we evaluated the integral of the function f of x over this interval x naught to x 1 by approximating the function by means of a straight line passing through the points x naught f naught and x 1 f 1 and h was the step size which is x 1 minus x naught. We evaluate a trapezoidal rule as integral x naught to x 1 f of x dx which is h by 2 f of x naught plus f of x 1 and the error was of order of h cubed or if we can make this h smaller and smaller then the error can be reduced and we would get better accuracy in evaluating this integral. So, how can we make the step size h smaller and smaller? You simply divide the interval x naught to x 1 into say a number of smaller sub intervals say of equal width and then apply trapezoidal rule in each of these sub intervals so what does that mean in this interval i approximate this function by this straight line in this interval i approximate the function by means of this straight line and so on so that in each of these intervals you would be approximating the curve by means of a straight line passing through those two endpoints. 
and apply the trapezoidal rule. So, I shall use the notation that I am interested in evaluating integral a to be f of x dx and I do it by dividing the interval a to b by means of equally spaced points x i which are given by x naught plus i h for i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, that my points are x naught, x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on x n minus 1 and b will be x n and apply trapezoidal rule in each of these sub intervals. So, the first interval is x naught to x 1 f of x dx plus integral x 1 to x 2 f of x dx integral x 2 to x 3 f of x dx and so on. The last integral will be x n minus 1 to x n f of x dx. So, when I apply trapezoidal rule it will be h by 2 into f at x naught plus f at x 1 plus h by 2 f at x 1 plus f at x 2 h by 2 f at x 2 plus f at x 3 and so on plus h by 2 into f at x n minus 1 plus f at x n. Because I have equally spaced points the distance between any two points namely the upper and the lower limit will be h. So, I have used trapezoidal rule in each of these sub intervals. So, I observe that it is h by 2 into I see that f naught appears once, f n also appears once, but f 1, f 2 etcetera they all appear twice. So, twice f 1 plus f 2 plus etcetera plus f n minus 1. So, what do, what do I have now? Integral a to be f of x dx is the step size by 2 multiplied by the sum of the end ordinates f naught plus f n plus the intermediate ordinates are taken twice. So, the formula gives me integral a to be f of x dx is h by 2 times sum of the end ordinates plus twice the intermediate ordinates. The resulting formula is what is known as composite trapezoidal rule. The composite trapezoidal rule. So, it is obtained by dividing the interval of integration into say n equal sub intervals of width h which is b minus a by n and the formula gives you h by 2 times the sum of the end, in end ordinates plus twice the intermediate ordinate. Again the question is what is the error that is incurred in composite trapezoidal rule. So, that can be obtained by computing the error that is incurred in evaluating each of these integrals in the n sub intervals. And we already have determined the error in trapezoidal rule when it is applied to an interval. So, we shall make use of that. So, integral a to b f of x dx minus the trapezoidal rule h by 2 into f naught plus f n plus 2 times f 1 plus f 2 plus etcetera plus f n minus 1 will be equal to the error that is incurred in evaluating the first integral between x naught and x 1. What is it? We have this expression minus h cubed by 12 into the second derivative at some say psi naught, where psi naught lies between x naught and x naught and x 1. Then the next interval is x 1 to x naught x 2. So, the error incurred is minus h cubed by 12 into f double dashed at psi 1 minus h cube by 12 f double dashed at psi 2. So, between x naught and x 1 
first term gives the error x 1 to x 2 the second term gives the error x 2 to x 3 the third term gives you the error. So, x n minus 1 to x n will give you minus h cube by 12 into the second derivative at some psi n minus 1. So, where this psi i lies between x i minus 1 and x i for i is equal to 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, this is the total error that is incurred in composite Simpson's, I mean composite trapezoidal rule. So, that is minus h cube by 12 into f double dash at psi naught plus f double dash at psi 1 plus etcetera plus f double dash at psi n minus 1. So, there exists a psi in the interval x naught to x n such that n times f double dash at psi will be equal to f double dash at psi naught plus f double dash at psi 1 plus etcetera plus f double dash at psi n minus 1 where psi is in the interval x naught to x n. Namely, I can find a psi in this interval such that the average of this namely the sum by n will be the second derivative evaluated at psi. So, I use that fact and write down this to be equal to minus h cube by 12 into n times f double dashed at psi for psi lying between x naught and x n. So, this will be minus h cube by 12 into I know what is n, how did I obtain this formula by dividing the interval a b into n equal sub intervals of width h is equal to b minus a by n. So, I substitute for n as b minus a divided by h into the second derivative at psi and that gives me minus h square by 12 into b minus a into the second derivative evaluated at psi where psi lies between x naught and x n. So, the error in composite trapezoidal rule composite trapezoidal rule is minus h square by 12 into b minus a into the second derivative at psi for psi lying in this interval x naught to x n. So, we observe that this error is of order of h square while the error in trapezoidal rule is of order of h cubed the error in composite trapezoidal rule is of order of h square. So, we have been able to see that the step size h has been reduced and we have now obtained a formula which is composite trapezoidal rule. So, that the given interval of integration is divided into number of smaller sub intervals of width h and resulting integration method has been got and we have obtained an expression for error in composite trapezoidal rule and we know that the error is of order of h square. The question now is can we find the bound for the error in this composite trapezoidal rule. So, what is the bound on the error? It is modulus of E which is this. So, let us uh, obtain the error bound. So, this will be absolute value of minus h square by 12 into b minus a into f double dashed of psi. So, suppose capital M is the maximum of f double dashed of psi for psi in the interval x naught to x n 
then I have e to be less than or equal to h square by 12 into b minus a into capital M. So, I can <coughs> get the bound in such a way that the error can be made as small as this. This gives me an information as to how many sub intervals into which I should divide the interval a b into in order that my error should be less than some prescribed value. Namely, if say I want my error to be less than 10 to the minus 6, then I must have my h to satisfy the condition that h square by 12 into b minus a into m to be less than 10 to the minus 6. Given the interval integral a and b are known, so I know b minus a, the function will be known. So, I can compute the maximum of the second derivative for values of x in that interval and get what m is. So, everything is known in this except h. So, h can be computed. Namely, we know the step size of each of these sub intervals. So, when that information is used here, then I know I must divide that interval a to b into n equal sub intervals, where n is b minus a by h, where h will come from here. So, the information on the bound on the error tells you if depending upon what your accuracy is or what you demand for accuracy, you can obtain the number of sub intervals n into which this interval a to b can be divided into. So, that you arrive at the value of the integral a to b f of x dx correct to the desired degree of accuracy. So, that completes our discussion on the trapezoidal rule, the composite trapezoidal rule, the order of accuracy of both the trapezoidal rule and the composite trapezoidal rule and how we can get the number of sub intervals into which an interval should be divided into depending upon the desired degree of accuracy. So, one thing that remains to be done at this stage is what happens to the Simpson's rule if we perform some similar discussion.